The biggest concern over this uh, security laws bill is how it touches on the human rights or the rights of Kenyans. And to help us understand this is uh, Mr. George Morara, who is the vice chairperson at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Um, let's get right into this. Yes. The passing of this bill, how does it affect the common monarchy? How does it affect uh, you and I? Uh, ben, th there is this notion that has actually been um, um, uh, banded out there mm -hmm. by certain quarters that hold that uh, human rights and security are not compatible. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, as your coverage has indicated, today really rightly qualifies to be the day of shame. Uh, the passage of this bill significantly conscript, uh, 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 um, um, re lessens the freedoms that uh, Kenyans are uh, uh, granted under the constitution in the name of uh, security. How does it lessen these, uh, th these rights that we, we, we so enjoy right now? What are some of the contentious uh, parts that you, as, a, as an organization, you, you believe are, uh, are supposed to be looked at again? Ben, um, first of all, as a commission, Wilson. Yeah? Wilson, my name is Wilson. Oh, Wilson, Wilson, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, there are uh, six areas that we've um, looked at as a commission. And uh, the six areas, we've done a very comprehensive, we did a very comprehensive uh, advisory mm -hmm. to the government, mm -hmm. capturing six areas that we are actually concerned about. Mm -hmm. First is the whole idea of the constitution of principles that um, uh, we're supposed to uh, follow in terms of um, uh, enacting new laws and all that, the principle of public participation and all that. Mm -hmm. I think what we've done as a country, that principle has been thrown out of the window because in a short span of time, mm -hmm. in less than two weeks, I think as a country, we, we've attacked the core of the constitution mm -hmm. by um, uh, undoing what we've been able to achieve over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we have a major issue with the process. Uh, the law is very clear. Any bill that is passed must have meaningful public participation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, amending 22 laws, as this bill was proposing to mm -hmm. do, within that short space of time of less than two weeks, gave Kenyans that. Number two, uh, issues of like a freedom of uh, assembly and association. We've mentioned that in our uh, in address of the president. Um, we've also mentioned um, key issues like um, um, the freedom of expression and information mm -hmm. that is uh, fundamentally attacked by this bill. Mm -hmm. We've also mentioned issues of access to justice, whereby actually it's even possible now to hold people without trial for a period of 90 days, and a whole raft of issues that we really think are taking us back. So all these recommendations yeah. that you talk about, these are recommendations that you have given to Parliament. Have, have have you given this to Parliament? We have given. Actually, we appeared before the Parliamentary Committee on uh, Security and National uh, 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 Commerce Committee, mm -hmm. and we gave these uh, uh, um, recommendations there. But the difficulty is again the time that has been given. I don't think any Kenyan has had time to really seriously interrogate, including us as a commission. Mm -hmm. We don't know which of the views that we gave to Parliament have been incorporated mm -hmm. or not, because we gave a whole memorandum clearly saying uh, how we, we propose that uh, the laws be amended or um, uh, um, there are places that we found to be completely unconstitutional and therefore deleted. Mm -hmm. But given the short space of time, what we are doing now as an office is then to look at, because the bill, uh, the bill has just been passed, so we'll go back to that bill and look at what has been passed and the extent to which it, in, it incorporates what we recommended to the committee. Mm -hmm. So your position as an organization, uh, the next move for you, what is the next move for you as a, as, a, as, a, as a human rights watchdog? If you look at the order paper that was given when this bill was actually uh, uh, being uh, uh, brought forward, mm -hmm. it was said that uh, the amendments that this bill is proposing are minor. But as I've said, we counted 22 bills mm -hmm. to be amended by, uh, 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 22 laws rather to be amended by this bill. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think the chair of the CIC tried to say that you cannot bring substantive amendments without uh, uh, discussing each of the amendments in a separate bill. But so what is the end game? The end game is this. Mm -hmm. The end game, as I've said, uh, we have a team of um, um, internal lawyers mm -hmm. plus other partners. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the constitu constitutionality of this bill mm -hmm. and uh, to the extent that it's unconstitutional and inconsistent with our constitution, to that extent then we'll seek other measures including uh, court action. So the next point for you, if, this, if something is not done about this, you might be going to court. Absolutely. What we're going to do now, like I told you, mm. as a country, I, I think we are all, we've been bombarded by a whole uh, a day of drama. Mm. And we've not had time to interrogate 
the so rapture past of this excitement, you look at the uh, absolutely. You look at these laws once yeah. again, and then you you and formulate a way forward. Wilson, for upfront, even um um uh, let me let, let me uh, let your viewers know that um as I said, mm -hmm. we've had serious issues with the bill that we've already pointed out. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, look at the extent to which Parliament really uh, took those issues into consideration. Mm -hmm. If they if they were not taken into consideration, past the excitement when all this dust of throwing papers around and shouting and all this has actually settled, our hope now really lies with the executive because, as I say, we are trying to go back to the days of regime policing as opposed to democratic policing, which is a dangerous thing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you thank for you. joining us. And thank, thank you. you for your insights. That has been George Morar, who is a vice chairperson at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, telling us that our hope now really lies in the executive. Well, we have to wait and see.